Hey kids, let's talk about the good old days growing up in Idaho. Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Growing Up in Idaho. Today I want to talk about the first year that the Hicks family spent in Salmon, at least the first year that I spent there. Now, keep in mind, Mike and Bertie Hicks, my parents, grew up in Salmon. They were kids in Salmon, and uh, they saw all the wild, wooly days of living in Cobalt and living in Salmon and and uh, some of the rough times back in the 40s and 50s. So the day that we're going to talk about today is 1969. That's the year that that Mike and Bertie Hicks moved from Boise back to Salmon. They went back home. And uh, I was five years old. Dad had just finished working uh, as a deputy sheriff in the Ada County Sheriff's Department, finished college, and now he was ready to embark on his lifelong career as an educator. And so... When we showed up in Salmon, mom and dad uh, rented a house out Highway 93 South. Um, just before you get to the Shoot Bridge, if you're headed south, you'll see it on the right-hand side, that farmhouse there surrounded by trees. And uh, I think, based on what I've heard, Dr. Earl and his family moved into that house. And perhaps they own it now. I don't know. Anyway, if that helps you understand where it's at, that's that was the place. It's a farmhouse surrounded by about seven acres of pasture. And we lived there for the first year of, uh, of my time in Salmon. And uh, let me kind of set the, the scene here. We moved from Boise, where we lived in a little one-room brick house on Ralph Roy Street. And um, when we got to Salmon, we lived in this, what seemed to me like a sprawling farmhouse. And uh, the whole place was different. In Boise, we had a train track right near our house. And the train would come rumbling through uh, numerous times during the day. And to be honest with you, when I got the salmon as a little kid, I couldn't sleep for the first few nights because I was expecting to hear a train. There was no train. There's a river in the background, but um, things were different. Not as many city sounds. And uh, living in the country was a whole new thing. And another thing, this house, this farmhouse in Salmon was a lot bigger than our place in Boise. And um, I never got lost in, in that new house. But it took me a minute to figure out where things were. I did, I'd be in a room and then I couldn't remember where mom was. And I'd have to go searching through the house for, which was a new experience for me. Being in a bigger place. And the outside, the, the area around the house, let me kind of set the setting for you. 1969, um, things looked a lot different then than they do now. Basically, uh, it was the same, you know, seven acres roughly. The river was out west there in the background, probably about. Oh, a 15 minute walk from our place, as I recall, walk out through the field and, and be at the river. And uh, we had a big barn next to the house. And out in the field, there was a few different old rickety barns. One of them, my brother and I, Mike, were forbidden to play around because it was about ready to fall over. And uh, dad didn't want us to get killed in a in a falling from the roof falling in or some crazy thing. So anyway, that's where we went and played because it was forbidden. And uh, as I recall, you could climb up on the roof of that old rickety barn, jump down through a hole 
and uh, land in the straw and old hay that was in there. And it, it made a good fort. So we played there, despite being told not to. We were typical kids. Now, one of the first things that we did when we got the salmon and got all settled in and moved in was dad took Mike and me down to the river. And he taught us all about the river and how to respect it and to understand how things worked. He taught us about the, the main channel and how um, you would have back yetis and to look for rocks under the water that were kind of sleepers, as he called them and logs, and brush, and things like that that you would get hung up in and possibly drown if you, uh, if you didn't uh, watch out and be careful. And he taught us about, uh, like I mentioned, eddies, um, and how they worked, and how you could get the current would in the eddy would pull you down under the water and possibly drown you if you weren't careful. And he taught us how to swim. And uh, and he expected us to go down there and play by the river or in the river uh, regularly on warm days. And um, you have to understand, Dad was one of those people and Mom were parents that wanted to teach their kids principles so that they could go and play and have fun and not have to have parents helicoptering over them all day long. In fact, we were kicked out of the house after breakfast in the morning, told not to come back until lunch. And then after lunch, kicked out again, told not to come back until supper on a lot of days. And so we had to, we got used to playing outside. And dad and mom knew we'd be at the river a lot of times, or we'd be up playing in the hills around the house or wherever. And they trusted that, that we would be okay because they taught us how to look for danger and to avoid it. And um, that's just how we grew up in Salmon. And that's how a lot of other kids grew up there too. So, um, uh, we started playing around and, and having a good time. We had plenty of open space. And uh, it was kind of like our our time in Boise. We had full run of the neighborhood there in Boise and had plenty of friends and plenty of enemies that we got into rock fights with all the time. In fact, let me tell you, um, kind of set the stage for this horrible story, this horrible thing that happened to me and made it so I couldn't have a bicycle when all the other kids were getting bikes. I was about five years old and this was in Boise. And uh, we were in a rock fight with the kids down the street. Now these kids um, were bullies and they were constantly calling me names and pushing me around. and. Uh, so I practiced. I figured rocks were probably the best weapons I had that were readily available since we lived there on the, our street was a dirt road, plenty of rocks laying around. And I got good at throwing rocks. When I was five years old, I could throw a rock the length of that street that we were on. And fairly accurately too, because when you're in a rock fight with bullies, you got to be accurate. Well, one day we were out there rock fighting and I picked up a perfectly good rock. And you know what I'm talking about. This is the kind of rock that you just know is going to cause maximum damage to whatever it hits. So I flung that rock down the street, hoping to zero in on this kid and, and bounce that rock off his cranium. Well, the rock kind of, zinged left and smacked into the back of this neighbor's window on his car. I don't know why he had his car parked on the street, but that's where it was, right in the way. Well, I saw that rock hit the window and I thought, oh no, things are going to go south quickly here. I ran up to the car, 
the rock was kind of embedded in the window. I thought, that's weird. And then about the moment I walked up, that window just crinkled <laughs> and fell into the back seat. Well, my dad was a police officer. He was deputy sheriff. And I knew that kids who broke windows went to jail. And I'd been to that jail. I saw it. I looked through the window and saw all those sad prisoners walking around in there. And I figured that's where I'm going. That's that's where I'll be for the next how many months or years. I went screaming into the house. and Mom tried to convince me unsuccessfully that I wasn't going to jail, but there were going to be consequences for me busting a window out of the neighbor's car. Well, the consequence was I didn't get a bike. Mom and dad took the money for my bicycle and paid for the neighbor's window, which was the right thing to do, I admit. But it meant also that I was one of these poor children who didn't get a bicycle at least for a while. Well, here we were in Salmon. We showed up. Mike had his bike, a little spider bike with a banana seat. Really pretty red bike. And fast, I might add. And our neighbor friends, Ricky and Danny Austin, there in Salmon, they had bikes. In fact, as I recall, Danny had this really cool bicycle that looked like a BMX bike. He'd ride around with a big smile on his face. Well, I didn't have a bike. And I complained to mom and dad about the fact that I had to go everywhere on my feet. And all the other kids had bikes. And uh, I got the same lecture from mom every time I spoke up. Jeff, children who break car windows while in rock fights with the neighbor kids don't get bikes anytime they want. So anyway, I had that to deal with as a little five-year-old kid. But let me tell you, life got better. Because one day, Dad came home from work. He had this big smile on his face. And he said, hey, Jeff, I got a little surprise for you. And I went through all my memory files and couldn't remember any reason that I should be getting a surprise but I was happy I said oh dad what could it be and he said well let's go out to the car and I'll show you so we walked out there and he opened the car door and the side door on this little Volkswagen bus that we had in those days and there sitting in the car was this really cool red and yellow um candy paint paint uh painted candy apple red and green bicycle with a little wheel in front and a big wheel in back <clears throat> it's kind of a cool little bike and i knew i'd seen that bike before i knew that that bike belonged to my cousin johnny and Johnny was one of the coolest people I knew. So to have something that belonged to him that was now mine was a big deal. Well, Dad pulled that bike out of the car. And he said, what do you think of this? And I said, oh, my goodness, this is great, Dad. Thanks. And I jumped on that bike. Now, let me explain how this thing worked. The little wheel in front. I don't know why the bike designers build it that way. I guess it was kind of like, um, supposed to be kind of like a little chopper bike, maybe because there was a, the back tire was a slick. It didn't have any traction and, uh, it was fast. The way the sprockets on the bike were set up made you, you could pedal and it would go fast. Well, my bikeless days were over. The days were over where I'd have to walk everywhere while everybody else was riding their bikes. And suddenly my life changed and I was no longer without transportation. And to a kid, especially a little kid in the country now, that was a big deal. And uh, so that's the... 
the setting for our first year in salmon. And uh, let me finish up with one story about um, something none that you might all be interested in. For those who grew up in salmon back in the good old days, you might have had a slough running behind your house. And there was a reason for those sloughs. Now, for those who don't know, a slough is a little body of running water behind houses. Um, and there, we had a slough behind our place in town in Salmon on River Street. And out on the highway, there was this little slough that ran behind our house. And we didn't know for sure what that was for until Dad said, well, I think our our sewer runs into that, that slough. And sure enough, Mike and I got to investigating and found a pipe pointing out of the bank, the, the slough, the bank to the slough. And we re realized really quickly that that pipe aimed right at the slough. So we tested our, our uh, little theory by going in the house and flushing the toilet with some colored toilet paper, ran outside. Sure enough, that water came flying out of the pipe right into the slough. Well, that was a new game for us because uh, things coming out of that pipe um, going into the slough was kind of a fun little thing to watch. So we ran in the house and we dug through, um, uh, my little sister, Julie's toy box and found some of her little tiny toys that would fit down the toilet hole, threw them in the toilet and flushed, ran outside. Sure enough, all Julie's toys <laughs> came flying out of that sewer pipe right into the slough. And so by the end of that day that we were playing with the toilet, um, half of my little sister's toys were floating down the slough. She'd never see him again. But, you know, you have to test things out, figure them out. And that's kind of how it was for us. When I was a little kid in Boise, I'd flush the toilet. I didn't know, have any idea where that stuff went. It was just a mystery. But now... Living in the country in Salmon, the mystery was solved. I realized that stuff actually goes somewhere. And in this case, it went right into the slough. And where did that slough go? Right into the Salmon River. So there's a little bit of history for you. Thankfully, thankfully, things are a little more civilized now. And everybody has a septic tank or, or uh, they're hooked up to the, the city sewer system. Thanks for listening. Growing up in Idaho, the good old days. 